While studying your Bible, have you ever come across a passage of Scripture that you didn't understand? Maybe it was one that was quite disturbing to you, or it was one that seemed to fly in the face of what you have been taught to believe, or maybe it was a passage that was disturbing simply because the style of language that was used by the biblical writers is one that is not easily discernible to us today. How do you respond in this moment of struggle? How do you come to an understanding of God's word? Well, before anything else, we need to remember what Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, verses 5 through 7. Paul reminded Timothy to always maintain a pure heart, a good conscience, and be sincere in his faith. Being sincere enough to admit error when presented with the truth of God's word is foremost. Diligence and care come only a breath behind sincerity. Being diligent to study God's word with integrity and a systematic method is paramount. Jesus did not call fishermen like James and John for their laziness, ineptment, or disregard for properly understanding his teaching. These men consistently asked Jesus questions because they wanted to understand Jesus. They wanted to understand his mission. They wanted to understand how they could become greater disciples of his. Consider consistently asking yourself systematic questions when studying any given Bible passage. The questions to follow will hopefully guide you in this effort and lead you in a better understanding of God's Word. The questions that we're going to be sharing in the remainder of this program today are ones that we can ask ourselves that will help us come to better clarity whenever we face passages of scripture that may not be very clear to us. These questions also assume that there are two principles of thought that must be understood. There is absolute truth and the proper interpretation of a passage is that which is intended by the original author. No more needs to be said on these points. No more needs to be considered. We do not need to dig any deeper than this. But now, I want you to notice some questions that we can ask ourselves that will help us better understand God's Word. First, we need to understand that the Bible is a book of literature, and this literature consists of different styles, different themes. It consists of poetry, of history, of narrative, of argumentative discourse, and of figurative and prophetic texts. With this knowledge, we need to ask the question, what type of literature is this verse found within, and how might this affect how I interpret the verse? Number two, why is the author writing this book? Does my interpretation of this single verse agree with the author's ultimate purpose in writing this book? Question number three, what is the immediate or surrounding context of the verse that I'm studying? Does my interpretation of this verse fit with that context? Question number four. Before I make a personal application of what is taught in this verse, do I understand what the passage originally meant? Personal application should never be made until the verse's original meaning is understood. Otherwise, we are dangerously near to making an application that the Holy Spirit never intended to be drawn. And this fallacy is at the root of many, many false doctrines that we see in the world today. And question number five, does anything within this passage allude to or echo back to an Old Testament passage or a teaching of Jesus? If so, go back to the passage alluded to and gain a better understanding of that text. Many times New Testament writers do allude back to an Old Testament prophecy, a teaching, a storyline, a character, or a theme, and they make a parallel application with that to their audience in the New Testament. God wrote God's revelation down so that his audience could read it and understand it, Ephesians 3, verses 3 and 4. He did not write it to be confusing. God's word is not beyond our grasp. Our grasp just has to reach into God's word and to find that proper understanding. Therefore, we need to pick up God's word. We need to spend time in it. And we need to glean from this wonderful treasure chest of knowledge these things that are new 
and these things that are old, Matthew 13 and verse 52. Friends, please consider these things and have a blessed day.